Hey everybody, Razorik here again with part two of my Roblox Studio introductory series. Uh, if you haven't yet watched part one, I suggest you go and take a look at that. It kind of covers some of the very basics of using some of the controls and interfaces within Roblox Studio. Uh, so if you're completely new to building content for Roblox, I highly suggest taking a look at that. Um, and in part two, we are going to go ahead and get started building some very basic models and kind of getting a little bit more in depth into uh, some of the controls within the studio and how we can use them to manipulate our objects and build something that's a little bit more complex than just a block. Um, if uh, you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe so you can keep current with all of my videos that I'll be uploading to this series as well as future series. Uh, down the line I'll be getting into uh, some scripting and more advanced uh, game development techniques. So to start off this series here, or sorry, this video, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the flat terrain. Uh, doing this instead of the base plate just because uh, gives us this grassy area here to work with. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to come up here to, first of all, the model tab underneath part. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this little drop down arrow and I'm going to select cylinder. And you'll see here it drops our part in our workspace. It also creates the part here. And we're going to go ahead and start manipulating this first off. So let's go ahead and lock our rotation snapping to 45 degrees and we're going to stand this part up on its end and let's go ahead and bring it up. Uh, one, one trick here um, because, uh, because we do have this flat plane to work with here and we don't really have any other objects to collide with. One trick that you can do as well, you'll notice right now it's, it's kind of halfway through uh, one thing that you can do is grab hold of the part itself. Uh, you'll know you're, you're in the right area when it turns into this hand cursor. Make sure that none of the arrows are highlighted when you do so. But Just grab the middle of the part and drag and you'll see that it actually places it right on top of your terrain. Uh, so now we have it sitting here and we're going to go ahead and come down here to our properties window. And again if that's not visible Click on your View tab. Just make sure Properties as well as your Explorer are both enabled. Uh, so within here, we're going to go ahead and choose our material. This switches from plastic to, let's go ahead and say wood. And then we're going to come up to Brick Color. And let's choose, um, yeah, brown looks okay. So now we have this brown wood patterned cylinder. If we select it, go back to our model tab. Let's go ahead and scale this up. I'm going to turn snapping back on. <coughs> and we'll go ahead and bring it up to about this height here. Okay. And if you haven't already figured out, this is going to be the trunk of a tree. With that done, let's go back up to our part button. Choose our drop down and hit sphere. The same thing here, we're going to change our material, but this time let's choose grass. And we're going to pick a green color this time. So let's go, uh, you know, camo looks okay. And we're going to go ahead and align this. Uh, I'm going to turn snapping off. One thing that I did uh, in the beginning of the video, I moved this around without enabling snapping. So this is kind of in an, in an odd position that this doesn't align itself with. And we'll cover how to fix that later and line things up properly. But for right now, let's go ahead and just manually move this. And if we circle around, just kind of make sure that we're centered here. Okay, very, very basic um, 
This obviously is not going to be the most realistic tree in the world, but it does kind of give you an idea of how to go about placing the parts and customizing their appearance, uh, and then you can build off of that knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and resize this a bit, about like here. Let's move it back again so we're lined up. And I'm just going to circle around, double check all the sides here. Now, <clears throat> one thing, when you're working with multiple parts, it can, it can tend to get a little confusing trying to figure out, okay, which part is which and, and things like that without coming in here and, and doing a manual selection and all of that, just to see what's highlighted. Uh, the best thing for you to do as you start building out your models is to go ahead and start renaming these parts so that they're easier to identify in the future. And to do that, there's two ways. You can either select a part and come over here to your properties pane. And if you look down here under name, you can change it here. So we'll say trunk. The other way is to go directly in the Explorer here and just double click. And we'll say leaves. Okay. Um, and now we have two separate parts, and they're going to behave as separate objects within the world. So when you start playing the game, uh, these are completely uh, separated from each other. And one thing to do when you start building these these more complex models is to go ahead and group them, so that way you have a single model containing all of your parts and objects that you can move around and manipulate as a whole. And to do that, just select the first part and then hold Control uh, Command if you're on, um, on a Mac and click the second part. And then if you right click, see Group. Clicking on that collapses them into a single model. And just like with the parts, you can rename this as well. So we're going to call this tree. Now you'll notice you have an arrow here. When you click this, it'll expand out and show you the individual parts inside of it so you can manipulate those individually. And with the model created, now when we move things around, you'll find that they move together instead of individually. And same thing goes for scaling as well as rotating. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a couple more of these clusters of leaves so it's not quite so lollipop looking. To do that, all you have to do, just select the part that you want to copy. And now there's two ways to make a copy. You can do a copy or you can duplicate. Now a copy, which you'll see if you do uh, Command or Control C and then Command or Control V, you'll see that it stacks it right on top of the other part, which in this case is not ideal. Not to mention it does also break it out of the model that it's in. Now one thing that you can do to fix that, if we go ahead and delete this, so we're going to copy, okay? Now we can select the model and Command or Control Shift V, which is paste into, and you'll see that it pastes it within that same model. A little bit more ideal, but still we're positioning ourselves above here. And yes, we could go back and move it back into place, but if you're trying to work quickly, uh, that's a little bit of a headache. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Selecting our leaves again, if you do Command or Control D, it duplicates the part. And you'll see it just created a copy here, but it hasn't moved it. So we're still within the same model that we're working in. But now we have two copies of our leaves. And you'll see if I move this over, the original is still there. So duplicate allows you to create a copy of that part in the exact same spot that it was copied from, which is very handy when you're doing some of your more complex uh, model creations. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is scale this down and Let's just sort of stagger them a little bit. I'm going to turn this off. And if you weren't watching the uh, part one of this series, this just sort of uh, constrains your movement, your rotation to 
whatever measurements you have set here. So disabling these allows you to sort of freeform move things around uh, without being locked to these measurements. So now I'm going to go ahead and create another duplicate. And we're going to move this to the other side here. Something like that. And we'll go ahead and do it again and bring it a little bit over here. Let's bring it up a little bit. Just sort of giving a little bit more of a shape. We can create a few more of these. Granted, this is not the most realistic looking tree in the world, but you do get the idea of, of how these things can be grouped together. Now, one thing to make note of, if I go in and I test this, now watch what happens to our tree. See how it's all fallen apart? So even though we had these parts grouped, they're still individual parts. And they are physics enabled, so I can kind of kick them all over the world, things like that. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to fix that, because obviously when you're building things, you don't want them to just crumble the moment that the game is entered and everything just sort of scatters this way. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and if we select these parts, you see this anchor here. Now, anchoring these parts allows you to keep them positioned where they originally were when you created. And you'll see that they're no longer falling apart. They're holding together when I run into them. That's what Anchor does. And in some cases, you are not going to want things anchored. Um, let's say you, you want something that is destructible. Uh, somebody hits it with an explosion or, or something like that. You want it to kind of fall apart. Uh, Anchor will actually prevent that from happening. Uh, there are other ways to attach your parts together and uh, still allow for that kind of, of uh, physical interaction, uh, but we'll cover that in later videos. For right now, we're going to stick with the basics and just use Anchor. Uh, now, another thing that you can do as well, since we have these grouped in a model, we can go ahead and anchor the model as well. And you'll see that now when I go and test this, even though I didn't anchor the parts individually, because they're in a group, they're in that grouped model, and I've anchored the model, they still behave as if they've all been individually anchored. So there's a couple of ways to go about doing that, and it really just kind of comes down to the way that your, your builds are structured, um, whether you have uh, things organized models, and this can come in handy doing it this way, because it does allow you to uh, handle various parts within a larger build uh, and, and allow them to behave in very different ways. <clears throat> so now with that being said, we can go ahead and duplicate this again. And I can demonstrate that difference for you. So I'm only going to anchor, you know, let's only anchor the trunk on this one. I'm going to create another duplicate here. And on this one, I'm only going to anchor the leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and set a spawn point so that way you can watch these as I enter the world instead of uh, just kind of looking around and, and trying to find where they're at. <clears throat> now one thing to note here uh, because we have multiple sides to a part, and especially since this is our spawn, right? We, we kind of want to know which way it's pointing. One nice trick is using this surface area of your properties here. You'll notice, uh, so we have a decal on the top surface here. If I select top surface, we get this yellow outline. So this gives us a really nice way of identifying which side is which. So if I'm going to look and see where is the front surface, you'll see that it's actually off to the side here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so that our front surface is actually pointing at our trees, which is what we want. 
So now when I enter the game, it's exactly as I wanted it. So I'm facing the trees. The leaves here fell apart. Now I've anchored the trunk, so it's not going anywhere. And this one over here, the leaves are anchored, but you see I was able to push the trunk out of the way. And on this middle model, everything is cemented in place. So good thing to remember when you are building your models is to pay attention to what's been anchored and how your models are organized uh, to give you the proper level of control over the physics that are going to get applied to the parts that, that create your models. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and start getting into some of the more advanced objects and um, uh, maybe some, some particle effects and different things like that. Do something a little bit cooler uh, that isn't quite so cartoony here. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit subscribe and like and drop any comments that you need uh, in the comment section down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next portion of our series in the introduction to Roblox.